Have you ever got a little bit mixed up and used the wrong words? Well, maybe. Like the husband who said having one wife is called monotony. <laughs> I assume he meant monogamy. When I was a kid, I told my mom that a friend got exploded from school. She was surprised. That's a bit harsh, she said. Such mix-ups are called mala... Such mix-ups are called malapropisms. The misuse of similar sounding words. I'm sure you use that word all the time, malapropisms. Word confusion leads to some unintentional linguistic creativity, which can bring about a delightfully humorous outcome. Here's some classic examples of word blunders from kids. I helped my dad in the garage. He let me hit some nails in with his hamster. <laughs> Poor little hamster. That's not a nice way to go. A proud niece said, Aunt Mary will be having a baby in March because she is stagnant. Kids also learn interesting things in school that will tickle your funny bone like this. In geography, we learned that countries with a sea around them are islands and ones without a sea are incontinence. I think that should be incontinence. <laughs> this is from an essay. In wartime, it was safer in the country. Children who lived in big cities had to be evaporated. An eight-year-old had this to say about composition. When you are writing, if you don't want to use a full stop on a sentence, you can use an excitement mark instead. Beautiful. Kids get their merds wixed up, and it's always nice to be around when it happens. When you write a story, said one, you should do a daft copy first. Then you can change it around and make it sound better. <laughs> I've written a few daft copies myself through the years. Equally entertaining are children's perspectives on everyday life. They are frequently found guilty of sharing too much information. TMI. A little girl said, my uncle shouts at my cousins and makes them do chores. One day they are going to be policemen and police women so they can put him in prison. You're under arrest. Another little girl said, I sleep in my bedroom, my brother sleeps in his bedroom, my mommy sleeps in hers and daddy's bedroom, but daddy sometimes sleeps on the sofa with our dog. I think this is because he growls like a dog when he is snoring in his sleep. An adult asked a little boy whose mother was expecting, do you want a boy or a girl? And the boy repeated what he thought he'd heard his parents saying, we don't care if it's a boy or a girl, just as long as it's wealthy. We're all guilty of inserting incorrect words and thoughts into conversations, aren't we? Sometimes this word confusion can be funny, of course, but sometimes it's belittling or demeaning. One of my prayers lately is that God would help me use words that build something positive, something noble. Proverbs 25.11 says this, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. The right word at just the right time is a work of art, isn't it? Just ask little Mary. She always knew she was different from the other kids, and she hated it. Hated their teasing about her physical features. Hated being different. Hated that she could barely hear with one ear. And then she entered Mrs. Leonard's class. Her teacher was kind and gracious. She smiled a lot. Now this was the 1950s, and teachers routinely administered an annual hearing test. During that test, Mrs. Leonard whispered softly into Mary's ear while Mary pretended to plug her good ear. The teacher whispered seven words that Mary heard clearly. Words she held on to. Words that shaped her for good. For Mary, those seven words were like apples of gold in a setting of silver. In our conversations, we too can deliberately choose to use words of gold to affirm and uplift others. Words like, way to go. You brighten a room. Thanks for your friendship. If I knew it would have been this good, I'd have married you back in eighth grade. <laughs> Our affirming words may be exactly what someone needs to hear, and they could be life transforming. The words Mrs. Leonard whispered to Mary that day, you know what they were? I wish you were my little girl. Well, it has been a slice, my friend. Thank you for watching. And uh, thank you for telling all your friends, and thank you for subscribing. You can have your cake and eat it too.